Good afternoon and welcome to St. Luke's Chapel. We pray for the sick and suffering and for all those for whom our prayers are desired, especially Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Middaw, Donna Lesh, Steve Frazier, Gail Yost Moika, Nancy Zamoyski, Amy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, Katie Ahart, Larry Padicky, Jackie Padicky, George Bowen, Jerry Gentilly, Cindy Burdick, Terry Collins, Joseph Robert Cass, Jack Carr, Gloria Kunzman, Bob, Bur Bob Wilcox, Mary Burkle, Greg Thomas, Jean Thomas, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Betty Pierce, Letha Shaler, Mike Scorsese, Tom Smith, Pamela Whitehill, Emma Burkle, John Irving, Penny Wilson, Butch Stamer, Arlene Birch Coleman, Virginia Johnson, Nancy E. and Will Vans, Mike Grover, Lori Lewis, Heidi McNeil, Becky Coons, Richard Kelly, Billy Joe Long, Lynn Wiles, Sammy Saclerio, Sharon Passmore, Joan Bartlett, Dale Foster, Richie Redsicker, Ethan John Diller, Joe Kennedy Tierno, Grant Kinney, Sarah Williams, Eleanor Perry, Eileen Ahart, Connie Pompa, Sherry Kosky, Rick Vanderpool, Dick Vanderpool, and Joe Bish.
verses number 42, we will do verses 1, 2, and 3. Lord. 
Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all of Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of heaven and God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your servant will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Well, it's warmed up a little from last week, so that's helpful. And uh, going to be cold the next couple days, but then warm again. So maybe we're getting a hint that spring might be coming eventually. We'll make it. Um, one of the things I'll ask your special prayers for is for Bob Wilcox, who entered hospice this week. Um, Bob is the son of John Wilcox, who worshipped with us for a while with Marie Ballander. And Bob Wilcox has Lou Gehrig's disease, or ALS, and he's getting very critical, and, and he's in hospice on King Road in Ithaca. So if you can just give a thought to him, it would be uh, helpful, I think, to send positive thoughts. It's a terrible, terrible disease. Uh, the new woman with us, with the red scarf around her neck is really Ann Frisbee, who's impersonating a, a much younger woman. <laughs> Ann, who's been through treatment for cancer, lost her hair, and now it's back, and she looks so much younger. I thought, who is that young chick? And uh, <laughs> Ann, that must seem good to have that all behind you. It does. That's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. That makes you feel good, doesn't it? Are there any other prayers, con prayer concerns, or anything that we should ask for? Okay. Um, I think that. Is there any other announcements, David? Anybody have announcements going on? Happy Valentine's Day. Um, Monday. And uh, so, be with the ones you love. In today's uh, bulletin, I put the words, the, the lyrics to the um, Nelson Eddy song, Ah, Sweet Mystery of Life. And I put the words in there because the words are very, very wonderful at describing what love is, how it's evasive, how it is a lifetime search for us. And I can remember that um, when we were youngsters, we had an old Victrola, and we had a, a 78 RPM record that had Ah, Sweet Mystery of Life with Nelson Eddy singing it. And, um, I thought, well, I'd like to hear that. I haven't heard it in a long time because I'd forgot what it was. Well, 
I thought maybe we could sing it in the choir, but after I heard it, and after I stopped laughing, um, I decided, no, we better just stick with the words, because it was very operatic, <laughs> and nothing that you would want in church, I think, so, but anyway, um, it tells about love, and that's exactly what God wants for us, is to discover sincere, genuine, and honest love. To not betray ourselves or not betray anybody else. To know within your spirit that you have found love. Know that it can endure anything. Differences of each other. And it comes in so many different packages, love does. And the love that we find in faith is actually finding the love of God that dwells in us in loving ourselves. And I think that that's what is important, that we celebrate on St. Valentine's Day what love is about. And as I was thinking about that, love is something, as the Bible teaches us, that endures forever. We learn that our spirit that keeps our body alive endures forever. And if we're created out of love, and if we have love, that that love will endure forever. And it endures from generation to generation to generation. The generation before us has told us of the love and special things about the generation before them. And that generation talked of the love and the gifts that those people shared with the generation um, after them and talked about the generation before them. So love is a very special gift. And the song, Ah Sweet Mystery of Life, tells us about the greatest mystery of life, I think, and that's the gift of love. And with any mystery, we try to resolve it. We try to seek an answer. We try to understand um, the things that go on with that emotion. And just when we think we got it figured out, we don't have it figured out. And it's when our heart connects to something that God wanted for us. It's when our heart connects to something that we want for ourselves. And we aren't supposed to change it. We aren't supposed to even try to change it. We are supposed to accept the love that is presented to us. And I think so often in our world with mysteries, we try to resolve them, and we may resolve them to our own satisfaction, but perhaps it's not to the satisfaction of others. It may not be to the satisfaction of the, the God of our understanding. But yet if it's in our hearts, we know that that love is there and will be there forever. And so often we make opinions. So often we, we know what is better for others. But the being that knows what's in our hearts, there's two beings that know what's in our hearts. The God of our understanding and ourselves. And so often in life, we gather opinions about people being together or people finding love with one another. And we cast opinions and judgment. I remember I, uh, in high school, I was dating a girl and uh, my mother uh, 
questioned me about this girl because I bought her a, a watch for her birthday, her 18th birthday. And it had a diamond each side of the crystal. And my mother, who was rather judgmental and opinionated, said, don't tell me what that watch means. I know what that watch means. It's an engagement without being an engagement. And she went on to tell me everything that was wrong with the girl that I was dating. But I knew in my heart it was a girl that I loved. And it didn't work out. We both went in other directions. But I can remember when my mother was telling me this stuff, I remembered the feeling in my heart that I knew it was an honest, genuine, and sincere feeling within myself. And nothing could change that. And so often we try to change people. And if it's in their hearts, we can't change them because that is part of their journey. That's part of the God of their understanding. And they may have to experience what they think that love is in order to know whether it's right for them or not right for them. And as the song says, we seek love our entire lifetime. It may be romantic love, it may be some other kind of love, but we continue to seek love our entire lifetime. And we hunger for love. We as human beings know that love can be the best medicine for us when we're sick. I still think when I'm sick, I think of my mother who was a rather stocky woman and her hands were fleshy sort of. And when I had a fever, she would put her hand on my head to check for a fever. And how wonderful that felt the coolness of her hand on my fevered brow, but most of all, the love that came with it. And all of you have had those experiences. And there was things she did that I didn't think were love things, like a mustard plaster on my back that blistered my entire back so I forgot I was sick, you know? and. We've all had those experiences. But a different kind of love a mother has for a child, a father has for a child, a woman has for a husband, a husband has for a woman. And God gives us that whole spectrum of love as a gift for us to choose from and we choose it with God's help by knowing what lies in our hearts. And it may not work out the way we want it to, but we have to trust it will work out the way God wants it to. So as we celebrate Valentine's Day, let us remember God's greatest gift, the gift of love. And let's let it happen. Let's not try to open our hearts to God's love on our terms. Let's let life bring us love and enjoy it when we have it. And often we don't realize we have something till we don't have it. So let us open our hearts to that love, the love that God intended for us. As we see the story of the Holy Family, we see God's love at work. As we see the Christmas story unfold, we see God's love at work during that wonderful birth. As we see the life of Jesus, we see God's love at work. Even in his excruciating death of crucifixion, we see God's love at work. And the promise of life eternal and his appearance to so many people afterwards shows us that that love, 
The Spirit of God that dwells in us lasts forever, through eternity. And I think that I was just trying to explain to somebody this week that had had two marriages, and she said, I loved them both. And I don't know which one I want to be buried by. And I says, you know, you love them both, but you love them in different ways. But your love was genuine and sincere. And we give up our bodies. Our only earthly material possession is our earthly body. And we give that up at death. So where you're buried, I think, is your decision. But I think the real important thing is that you will be seeing both of them when you enter the kingdom of heaven. And in that love, they will know through God's wisdom that you love them both, genuine and sincere, but you love them in different ways. And that is part of God's gift to you, that though one love ended through death, it stayed after death. And a second love came along to continue your earthly journey. So don't get caught up on what's right or what's wrong. Just open your hearts to life and to love and continue to seek God's love in whatever way it comes to you. But let it happen. Let it happen. And let life unfold as it should. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The alms basin is in the back. If you would like to make a donation on the way out, please do so. Thank you. Our offer to writing is number 546. <laughs>
ask your blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's Church and the world God, we come before your altar this day, asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors, or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these, our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. We trust through faith that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for your servant, Daniel. We trust through faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received him into your heavenly kingdom. Be with his family and friends, that as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. In chapel, let us nod peace to one another at home. Embrace those you love with your love.
Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us. Following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray.